spirituality, and that's um, something that we've been discussing all the way through the festival. Um, and you're, you're in a place where people understand gender nonconformity. Yes. So you're, yes. you're among friends. Yes. yes, right here. You know, um, fascinating. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, the discussion that you, the point you just made are a discussion we can have outside the room. But I think that, that one thing that's important to the people that come to this festival is that we own our own bodies. And that's across the board. Every woman, every man should have the right to do with their body what they want. Exactly. But the question I have, and the, the labels are important to me, because I think in the culture we live in, um, only a heterosexual can say that they're mm -hmm. not, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's not a hostile re response. Yeah. But I was interested in their sex life because Gloria says, you can't do this and I can't do that. And, and I understand companionship. Mm -hmm. I understand that, that marriages are based on many things, but sex does not seem to be a part of this relationship. Affection, yes. Right. And sex is what traditionally on all sexual orientations has what brought people together in a relationship. So you chose to sort of tease us a little bit in the mm -hmm. film, but not to answer this question. The other is, where's Gloria and Dan today? So the, uh, it's exactly right. I wanted to tease it because I really feel like sexuality is none of our business. Um, but I did want to give people a sense of their romantic life. So to the extent that they make it work somehow, um, you know, she has told me different things at different times, you know, well, we, we, we do this, but we don't, don't do that. I mean, imagine now she sees herself as a woman. Uh, when she was a dominatrix, she had sex with men, um, which she hated. Uh, so I would think that was off the table if you wanted to do anything that resembled the heterosexual sex. So, I mean, I can think about what that means, but for the film, I just felt like, I, just to use your imagination, and it's sort of private. And today, they're doing great. She just had hip surgery. Uh, that's another thing that, look, she's 82 years old now, uh, sexuality is important at any age, but it's not a, a priority as much as companionship. Mm -hmm. And she told me a funny story, uh, which it was too long to put in the film, but she used to hang out with a lot of les her lesbian friends and trans friends, and she said, I, I used to be hanging out with them and, and miss Dan, miss being with him. And she said, that, that's when I knew that this relationship was not just some guy who's going to pay for my sex change operation, or this hanger on her, or I need for financial support, or, or he's a good guy. No, no, there was something genuine about their relationship. When she said to me, I missed him. I would be in a group of, of women and, and wonder what Dan was doing, and couldn't wait till I got together. Because you see how they kibitz with each other. You know, she didn't have that. The women that she was in, that, da that Butch was involved with, are very, you know, tough uh, women, and um, surely we didn't get into it a lot, but she had these two kids, two grown children, that just wanted Butch to buy them stuff. It's like, she says one line, you know, what, what else could you do for me? You know, you're not doing enough for me. So that was the dynamic in their marriage. You couldn't do enough for me, where Dan just wants to protect her. And I thought it was fascinating that Dan says, he perceived Gloria as this wounded person. Like everyone else sees Gloria and Butch as these tough people, but in Dan's eyes, Gloria was somebody that needed protection. She was abused uh, emotionally and financially. Remember he said that? And I felt like maybe if she's with me, I could make her less angry with the world. So he, he sees himself as a protector of her, which is just fascinating. She never had that before. So I think that's He's so beneath one. the mask. Yes. It, that was one of those layers that it took a while, like, oh, wow. He feels like he's protecting her. Now, she may not think she needs it, but she likes that she's not being used by yet another person. 
We have a question. But did you right ever here. find out? I mean, the children, we don't know whether they ever knew the story of Gloria. Did you ever yeah. have any conversations with them or yes. did they see this movie? I don't know if they've seen the movie. Probably not. We did try to contact them. They want absolutely nothing to do with her. They will, you know, let, you know, let her live. They're not going to make trouble for her. Um, but they were raised uh, by Cookie's husband, Cookie with Cookie's husband, the first wife, and the, the attorney, her divorce attorney. <laughs> uh, and that they have his name. So, um, you know, there was no contact. And we tried, and Stephen tried. Uh, so it's, it's sad. Now, Gloria says, let sleeping dogs lay or lie, you know. I don't know. I think she would love to see them. And I think Stephen is a substitute for her sons. She misses that, you know, the cars, and just the, you know, chumming around. She misses that. That's very sad. Um, but who knows what the future will bring and if they will come around. Um, I want to just let the audience here know a little bit more about what you have going on because I know they'll be um, eager to see what comes next for you and um, you had an Academy Award winning editor on this film and you have um, the host of Entertainment Tonight as your producing partner so I feel like there's a lot of great projects in there with all of those um, talented teammates it's behind you. Very different stuff, you know, I less year I did a film uh, in Timbuktu, Africa, about the Tuaregs called Behind the Blue Veil, uh, which is available on Amazon and iTunes and all that. Um, and so my films are never really about the same. Like some people say now you should find a niche and you know build your audience, but I just, when stories come to me that are fascinating, I want to learn. You know, I feel like I take on topics that I want to learn about and if I become fascinated then it's worth doing spending the next few years of my life doing. So I have a TV series with uh, my uh, partner, uh, producing partner is the host of Entertainment Tonight, Nancy O'Dell. And we have a TV series on the Reels channel that's coming out in the spring. It's called Remember When right now, but it could change. But it, uh, it's about Michael Jackson, Princess Di, Joan Rivers, Robin Williams, the last days of the people to eyewitness uh, their final hours, the day that they died, that uh, everyone remembers so well. And then I'm doing a film called Do No Harm about physicians who commit suicide. Um, they have the highest rate of suicide among all professions and how it's tied to medical mistakes, which is the third leading cause of death in the U.S. And it's all related to burnout, sleep deprivation, and it's really scary stuff, really scary stuff about the toxicity of our healthcare system today. Wow, well there's a lot of topics there and I'm sure <laughs> they will want to pick your brain about in the lobby, um, but sadly we have to bring this to a close. Please help me uh, thank our director here. Thank you so much Robin. It was a pleasure to have you.